Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Hey, welcome back to theCUBE. Continuing live coverage on day three of AWS reInvent 2017. We have had three days of great coverage, 44,000 or plus people at this event. Lots of great announcements from AWS, from their partners. And we're very excited to be joined by our next guest, Christoph Pfister, the Executive Vice President of Products from SolarWinds. Thanks for stopping by and chatting with Justin and me today. Thank you for having me. So tell us, what's going on at SolarWinds? What are some of the cool things that you're here to announce? Right, so first of all, great show, isn't it? Amazing. Very Amazing. busy, <laughs> yes. And it's a great show for uh, us because we've announced a few new products and initiatives. And amongst them, uh, the first product that um, provides both powerful and affordable uh, full stack monitoring for DevOps uh, people. And so we'll talk hopefully a, a little bit more about that uh, in, uh, in a few minutes. But um, you know, that's really you know, the, the heritage of SolarWinds. We provide software that's simple, yet powerful and affordable. And we've been doing that since you know, about 1999 when the company was uh, founded in Austin, Texas. Uh, and you know, the, the big thing about this is that you know, we build software that IT professionals love. And they love it because it's simple, approachable, affordable yet powerful, uh, and um, you know, that has propelled us to a leadership position in uh, network uh, management, network monitoring. So SolarWinds is uh, the number one by market share in that space, and we're now uh, aiming to bring that to um, the, that simplicity, that power, uh, to cloud monitoring as well. So uh, you have a great community of, of people with, yes. who love SolarWinds. Yes, community. Massive community, the, the whole, the SWAC, uh, community and everything that people you talk about You know the company online. well. That's I know good. the company well. I've, I've been to Austin many times. See, I've been to the campus, it's, it's a great company. So, people know those tools really well. As you say, you're very, very strong in, in network monitoring. So, tell us a bit more about this, this full stack monitoring that you're doing. What, what do you mean by full stack? Yes, so, you know, if you think about, um, you know, some of the key trends we see in uh, the market, yep. let's go, you know, top to, uh, to bottom. Um, you know, AWS announcing all these services here at the event. Uh, you know, machine learning services, analytic services, uh, you know, new database stuff, amazing. And so, you know, all of these services are going to make their way eventually into applications, yep. into apps, right? So there's going to be more and more apps, uh, and these apps are um, going to deliver value to businesses, to consumers, and therefore need to run, you know, pretty much flawlessly, right? Uh, yet, behind this uh, usually simple user experience of these apps, you know, these apps have become, become massively complex. Yeah. Right, so back in the day, and I'm going to date myself a little bit now, uh, you know, when I started in monitoring, it was pretty simple. It was like, uh, you know, client server, three tiers, and the app was pretty uh, static, right? Yeah. So nowadays, it's all about microservices. All about microservices. All these dependencies that exist, uh, which makes, means that if there's a failure, it may be cascading, a cascading failure. And so it's much, much more difficult to figure out if your app is doing well or not. And so monitoring becomes so much more uh, important in that context. And by the way, here at the show, you know, people talk about monitoring a lot. And uh, maybe the other proof point I would have is that in the marketplace, uh, one of the top eight categories that um, Dave McCann mentioned on stage at the partner event was, you know, monitoring is the, uh, the one thing in the marketplace that people just, you know, need and, and want. So, so monitoring is, uh, is important. Uh, and so what uh, we're announcing here at, what we've announced here at the show is a brand new product called uh, App Optics. And App Optics converges traditional infrastructure and application performance management. Okay. Uh, and provides, um, you know, coverage for what we call the three layers of observability which are metrics, yeah. logs, and then traces, transaction traces. Because we think that without transaction traces in these microservices type architectures, very, very difficult to get to the root cause of issues. And so, you know, we aim to cover the three layers of, or the three pillars of observability, uh, metrics, logs, and traces with uh, app optics, and do it in a way that is 
simple and approachable. What do you mean by, I think it was a press article that you reported in about democratizing monitoring. What, is, what do you mean you by- like that term? Uh, it's very cool. <laughs> well, what does it mean? What does it mean? All right, so, you know, if you think about, um, uh, you know, companies with application portfolios, right? So, you know, larger companies may have between 500 and 800 apps, but um, there are studies out there that say only about 10 to 15 percent are being monitored. And so why is that? It's uh, for two reasons in our view. One is that um, application performance monitoring has not been very affordable. Uh, so it's a question of, uh, you know, if I need to buy, you know, if you need to pay 100 bucks a host uh, to get application performance monitoring, then, you know, many companies are not going to do it. And the second reason is approachability and simplicity. Meaning, uh, if you have to instrument your app manually, and I know you guys had a guest uh, the other day who talked about the uh, importance of instrumenting apps, and that's you know, totally true. But you have to make it approachable, meaning the instrumentation has to be automatic. And that's exactly what we provide. We provide automatic, one single line installation instrumentation for uh, all these microservices uh, languages. So we cover seven languages. We cover PHP, Python, Java, .NET, and I'm Go, and I'm forgetting a few, of course. Um, and so making um, your application performance and infrastructure monitoring, number one, cheaper. So we start with App Optics at seven bucks fifty a host a month. If you compare that to the hundreds of bucks a host a month that are kind of, you know, common game in the industry right now, that's pretty disruptive. And we make it much much quicker. Uh, to instrument these apps. So that's what we mean by democratizing uh, application performance and infrastructure management because we think many more companies will be able to afford it and many more companies will be able to actually deploy the stuff uh, in a timely manner. So once you've instrumented it, what, what, who, is it who is it targeted for? So Because well, developers love to live in code land and do everything through APIs, but operators do actually like to be able to see things in charts. And I, for me, I like living on the command line, absolutely, but I enjoy a good picture as well. And sometimes it's much, much easier to see what's happening if I just draw a graph rather than sitting there looking at streams of code flying absolutely. by. So do, do you have both of those options available at, in a DevOps model? Or who we are the totally, people that you're targeting? We totally do. So we target the DevOps persona, the DevOps, DevOps engineer, sometimes called system reliability uh, engineer. Yep. Uh, and so we provide you know, dashboards, like the, the metrics, of course, that you would uh, traditionally want to see and see how things are going over time. Uh, we provide the traces, and also that's very graphical, so you see how much time a transaction spends in each of the layers of uh, the app uh, and each of the microservices. Okay. And that's very visual uh, as well. And then, of course, we provide uh, API, REST-based APIs uh, as well to uh, you know, allow developers to do stuff with it. Yeah. So a couple things that I heard you say in terms of the value proposition that SolarWinds brings is, is being able to facilitate um, from 15% to hopefully 100% of applications being monitored. That price has 80, really 80 been- 80% would be great. 80%. If we get to 80%, it would be great. <laughs> well, you said that price has been a really big inhibitor. Um, so you guys do it for a lot less and faster. Can you give us an example of a customer that you've really helped transform so that they get much more visibility into upwards of 80% of their applications? Yeah, so I mean, App Optics is just coming out. So we've announced it. It's a new product. Uh, and so we've had you know, tons of customers in uh, beta. Uh, the first thing I would say is that uh, all of them were up and running and uh, actually getting metrics into the dashboard in between uh, three and five minutes. So very, very fast. So this one line, you know, auto instrumentation really clicks. Um, and so there's universities, there is uh, you know, smaller IT shops, there's big companies who are interested uh, in that kind of stuff. Uh, in general, you know, one of the things that people don't necessarily know about the uh, SolarWinds portfolio is we've started to invest in uh, cloud in uh, roughly 2014. Uh, we've acquired some premier products and franchises, one of them being Pingdom for digital experience monitoring, another one being Papertrail, which is an amazing uh, hosted log management solution. Yep. And between these solutions, we have about, you know, slightly uh, short of a million users already. Wow. So, you know, significant, significant uh, footprint in, uh, in the marketplace. And so, you know, customers, we have customers that are sort of these, uh, you know, cloud native, born in the cloud companies, like GitHub, Spotify, Airbnb, uh, and so uh, uh, Uber, as an example. And we have the traditional companies, New York Times, BBC, uh, you know, packaging companies, smaller companies. I mean, 
it's really running the gamut of um, you know, the, the space out there. What is digital experience monitoring and how are you doing that? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> So we look at digital experience monitoring from uh, two facets, really. The first facet is, so I talked a lot about observability and sort of this uh, you know, white box monitoring where uh, you got to drill down into the code and the transaction uh, and so on. But you know, typically, you know, one goal of monitoring is to be ahead of uh, your consumers in terms of noticing problems. And so for that, the best way is really to have synthetic transactions that simulate you know, user behavior Hitting your, uh, hitting your app. Yeah. And so that's one, um, you know, synthetic monitoring is one dimension of uh, digital experience. But beyond that, and that's where we're investing very heavily with Pingdom, is uh, this notion of, yeah, we talk a lot about apps, but there's lots of, you know, companies out there that are putting their stuff out on, you know, websites, right? So nowadays, if I go to the doctor and uh, later on I want to see my test results, it's on a website. If I go to you know, take my car to the garage, you know, they make appointments on the website. And many times these people have no idea you know, how this, their site is doing, what the response time is, all that kind of stuff. And so that what, that's what Pingdom uh, provides. But what we're uh, doing, taking it beyond the simple uptime and performance, is we're marrying business metrics, like bounce rates, like what's the bounce rate of the site? You know, what's the revenue that's the site uh, driving right now if it's a re revenue generating site? and correlating that with the performance aspects of the site. Like, you know, how are the transactions doing? Uh, you know, how, how long does it take from uh, the first click to the shopping cart? And so that's what we think of as digital experience. And there's much, much more to do, because really what you want to do in the end is to see, you know, how users flow through your um, uh, web page and where they uh, probably disengage, where they, uh, you know, move somewhere else. You want to detect these spots and see if it has to do anything with the performance or you know, the way you laid out the site. And so digital experience monitoring, uh, we think, is going to be huge. Absolutely. Well, awesome. thank you so much for stopping by, Christoph, and speaking with Justin and me. We could keep going, but unfortunately, yeah. we are, we are out so of time. Short. Exactly. Well, we're, well, we look forward to having you back on the show next time. I'd be delighted. And we want to thank you for watching. I'm Lisa Martin for my co-host, Justin Warren. You're watching theCUBE live from day three at AWS reInvent 2017. Stick around, we'll be right back.